The Cape Crusader gets a new collectible figure as we have a look at the upcoming release of the Sideshow Collectibles Batman 6 scale figure. Thank you to the folks over at Sideshow Collectibles. We're going to be able to have a look at this figure early. Currently, he is on a pre-order over at Sideshow's website with an estimated arrival date of December 2018 to February 2019. Batman is also only limited to 1,000 copies worldwide. The first thing we do is figure out how tall Batman is. I'm going to clear just past his head. I'm going to give it, take the measurements right up to the top of the ears of his cowl, telling us right off the bat, there we go, we just get it to hold the figure from his feet to the top of his cowl ears. The figure stands 12.4 inches in height. Translating that to centimeters, if you are somebody that follows your figures in centimeters, then the figure stands 31.5 centimeters in height. For Batman's display stand, he gets the same tried and true hexagonal display base that we've seen with other Sideshow releases. The same base we've seen with many of their six scale figures. However, the printing is much different here for Batman. Looking at this, I'm guessing that this is the Batcave and then you've got a floor grate in the middle here that shares the, exam, the same hexagonal shape as the base itself. The display stand, standard black neck, and then you've got the support clip on the top that you can then take the figure and just sort of hover over top of him and you can support the figure like this. It's a great job of simplifying the way that you're gonna display the figure. I don't think Batman necessarily needs a big honking size display base. These hexagonal shaped display bases that Sideshow includes with all of their figures is perfectly fine for this specific Batman. I will admit though that the display stand could have been a little bit more jazzed up. I like the shape. The shape doesn't so much bother me, but I feel like they could have done a little bit more to the base itself other than just adding the cream and then that slightly darker shade. Um, it, looking at it, it's hard to kind of decipher what specifically it's from. My guess is it's from the Bat Cave, but I guess it could be any internal flooring of a building that just happens to have the floor grate in the center there. For his accessories, Batman comes with a pair of Batarangs. And to even just say pair almost indicates that they could be identical to one another, but you can see they couldn't be further from being identical. One almost looks as if it shares the sort of design that we would have seen from a Silver Age or Adam West style time period of Batman in which the Batarang are almost, I always look at them as almost like a mustache, but it's a curved shape and then smaller curves making up the underside of it. Whereas the other Batarang is a little bit more modernized, as you can see there, making out much more of a defined shape of the Bat logo than this one right here. 
Now the material of these feel almost as if they are made of metal. In fact, putting them in your hand, they do almost feel and sound like they are tinging together as if they are metal batarangs, which is nice if that be the case. The colorings of these are slightly darker than the shade of the blue that Batman uses for his cowl and his, and of course his cape and whatnot, which I'll show you guys in a second. He also comes with a series of interchangeable hands. Uh, he comes with a pair of dynamic gesture hands, as you can see right there. This is a great way for displaying the figure, sort of if you want to have one hand holding a batarang and then the other hand sort of leaning forward. That seems to be my go-to when displaying the figures. The hand sculpts are really nicely done here. And one thing, I this is a small thing, but this is something I always appreciate when it comes to sideshow releases. Each and every hand that comes included with their six scale figures all always come, or generally always come, with pegs already built into place. Now that may seem small, taking that into consideration and feeling the need to mention that in the course of a review. But I do like that because if you compare it to say, like a Hot Toys release, you usually get one set of pegs and maybe a backup pair of pegs. If you ever want to change Batman's hands out, I only have to then pull the hands out and then I can just replace it with these ones. I don't have to worry about the pegs staying behind and then having to try to pull them out on my own. So it comes with those. He also comes with a pair of gripping hands. Now these hands, as you could probably see, are best suited for holding the batarangs. We can go ahead and do that right now. The batarangs sit very comfortably, very securely in place. And we can go ahead and do it with the other one as well so you guys can see. Slide that right into place. This one, just by the, the nature of it being the shape that it is, doesn't sit as securely as, say, for example, the other one. But still, both the hands are very adequately suited for holding the batarangs. I kind of wish that he could have had other accessories as well, other than just straight batarangs, maybe like a grapple gun or something like that as well. But at the very least, you do get yourself some batarangs and that's not bad at all. The other accessory that I really like is that they've also included an exclusive alternate Bruce Wayne portrait. This is something that you don't see very often at all, a Batman that actually has a Bruce Wayne head sculpt. And I do really like this head sculpt. It certainly has a sense of anguish across his face. He has gone out and fought the good fight against crime, and it definitely shows here on the head sculpt. I like that the hair is slightly tussled here on the side, hanging down a few strands, while primarily most of the hair is hanging off down to the side here. It is a really good head sculpt, though, I have to admit. And the paint also does a great job of bringing forth the gray head sculpt by, you can see here that the paint also helps to accent areas like the sides of the eyes, which have a little bit of the crow's feet, the wrinkling there on the corners, as well as the furrowed section there on the front of his, of his, uh, his brow here. It does really have a great look to it. Now looking at it, you can see that there's this little band of blue. They've not only painted it, but they've left a little elevated area here of blue plastic to make it look as if it's the top of Bruce Wayne's or the top of Batman's neck. I'll show you how that replaces out, but I think we'll first have a look at the figure. Now depicted here is Batman. This is the more stylized comic inspired Batman. So with that comes a more classic blue and gray attire. Um, I really like that they went blue and gray as for me, I always, I always think of more so Batman having blue and gray colors than I picture him having black and gray. The black cowl and black cape seems to have always been a go-to when it comes to Batman figures. And I'm glad they went the route of using blue. Speaking of blue, you probably can see that I'm excessively feeling the texturing here of the cape. The cape is almost alluring because it's made of a stretch, almost spandex-like material. It has a nice soft feel to it. It almost actually feels like a silk, like a little bit more of a textured silk. But I like that it's got a, some elasticity to it, and it does have some stretch, and I do like that. Looking at Batman's head sculpt, this is one thing I really like about this particular figure. Now, it's a stylized version of Batman, but it does have still the grimmest look on his face. You can see a lot of the wrinkles happening there on the cowl portion of his face. I have noticed, though, that previous six-scale figure releases of Batman usually depicts the character's face sculpt as somewhat old. 
This one is a little bit more youthful of a face. In fact, any bit of the age seems more conveyed like around here than it does here. Here it still stays relatively young. And we just compare it once again to the alternate Bruce Wayne head sculpt. So you can see the difference between the two. The chin portion, basically from like the neck down, the nose down I should say, is almost identical to one another, as it really should be. You really would not want to be having two different head sculpts with two completely lower halves. They should look identical to one another. And there's the side portraits of both of the head sculpts. This is a, an excellent addition. Honestly speaking, I probably would never display him with the alternate Bruce Wayne head sculpt. But one thing that you could do as a workaround is certainly taking the Batman head sculpt off. And like I did at the beginning of this review, simply make it look as if Batman's holding, Bruce Wayne is, I should say, holding the, the cowl in his hand. You, of course, would have to make sure that the eyes and the face portion are facing inward, but it's, it really would be an excellent effect by having Bruce Wayne holding the cowl in his hand. Again, we'll, uh, I'll show you how that plugs into place. It's actually just via a ball joint, but I'll show you that in a second. Again, really do like the head sculpt quite a bit. It almost looks as if, too, they've added a little bit of gray airbrushing around the mouth area just to simulate that there's a little bit of stubble that's growing in. There's a nice reflective nature to Batman's eyes. They almost at points come across like they're a little more on the metallic side, and it's just the way that the light is hitting it. It's almost like a pearl sort of effect that they've done with the eyes, and I do really like that as well as I like the shape that they've given Batman's ears. Their ears aren't simply just molded out from the rest of the, the cowl. You can almost, well, you can see a definitive line where the ears make up the side of his jawline. The jaw st starts and stops here, and then the ears are just almost an extension out from his, well, the points of his ears are the extension out from his human ears underneath there. You've got some nice wrinkling happening at the back portion. Of course, this is plastic. The neck area below is fabric. It's a little jarring at first, but in all honesty, I don't mind the fact that they went fabric here as opposed to using this plastic, because then it would always come to the problem of the cape being fabric, and then you've got the plastic neck. I think it's a better transition of having this fabric and carrying its way immediately right into the cape as opposed to a big starting and stop cut, where then you've got the cloth cape happening here. To take Batman's head off, just want to pop it right off. A nice big ball joint, so it's nice and easy to change out. Then we're going to go ahead and take the Bruce Wayne head sculpt and pop it into place. Now, talking a little bit, remember we had mentioned that little plastic band right here. It does actually a nice job of finishing the top of the neck, so it doesn't look like you've just got immediately fabric stopping, and then the human area, the face sculpt of Bruce Wayne, starts. This plastic, this little band right here, does a really great job of then, again, of finishing off the neck. And there you've got the Bruce Wayne head sculpt. Again, really does look quite good. And the workaround to that, if you simply still want to make use of the head sculpt, as I done at the as I had done at the beginning of this review, you could simply just have him holding, you know, the Batman cowl at least in a way that you're not going to necessarily see the face area of Batman kind of a workaround to that. Looking at Batman's body here, it's a nice gray that they used. It complements the coloring. I love this blue. Complements the coloring that of the blue of the of the cape, the cowl, and of course the gloves and all that, which we will look at in a second. This is a small detail that I'm glad Sideshow incorporated is this little seam here. The seam runs to the sides of his torso and runs down the length of his arm. It just gives a little extra oomph to the figure's body as opposed to having it just a regular fabric. It just also indicates too that there could be maybe an under armor that's underneath Batman's bodysuit as opposed to simply just being fabric. Speaking of undersuits, hopefully the camera is going to be able to pick this up and do proper justice. I love that they've actually given a Batman a muscle suit underneath, a muscle body. You can see the very defined pectoral muscles and the six pack. There's a six pack of abdomen muscles right there as well. If I pull back Batman's fabric here, you can see right there as well, they've sculpted a vein in his bicep. I mean, that's a small touch. I really like that they put 
something as small as like a vein in the bicep. It's these little small details that I certainly really appreciate when companies go above and beyond, simply just above just putting a fabric outfit over a generic body. Clearly, this looks like they've given him a specifically unique body for, for Batman. And it's probably something that's going to carry over when they eventually release other superhero figures. I certainly hope they would make use of this this muscular body again, as you definitely would want superheroes to be big, to be muscular. You don't want them to be regular bodies underneath all this where the fabric is just sort of just draping on them. Here, you can really clearly see defined muscles in the shoulders, in the bicep area there as well. You can see how the fabric sinks its way in and you can see how it outlines its way around Batman's muscles. I really like that a lot. Moving further down, we've got Batman's utility belt here done in a very nice mustard yellow. They've aged it a little bit by dry brushing some nice gray and black in there. The front buckle still remains relatively unscathed by this extra paint. Instead, it actually favors a little bit more of like just a straight metallic gold, while again, the rest of the pockets are a, a more like a, a, a warmer yellow. The belt can be detached. I don't really know why you would want to detach it. I like that they've given the belt seams on the sides, and it does look like it's almost made of a leather material. Talking a little bit about Batman's gauntlets here for a second. The gauntlets are made of a softer, almost rubber-like material. It's actually, I'd, I'd be curious as to what material they used for it, because when you feel it, it feels like it could be almost like a leather or a, a, like a material similar to that. He's got, of course, the gauntlet blades, and I'm glad that they gave it softer plastic for these rather than harder plastic. One of the problems that I've had with previous Batman figures is when they've used hard plastic here because these have always been really, really sensitive as a result of it. Being that these are soft plastic, it means that there's a little bit more forgiveness when you want to be rotating the arms. I don't feel like I have to kind of work my way around making sure I don't, of course, touch this if I want to use and rotate Batman's hands. And luckily, I don't have to worry about that, being that these are soft. His legs carry on the tradition of having that seam line running now down the middle as opposed to the sides here on his torso. They work their way around his kneecaps. You can see that the costume does a great job of fitting and hugging its way around the muscles. So you can see like the thigh muscles, you can see the defined areas around his kneecap, making our way down to the boots. Now the boots are actually really neat. The boots have that same sort of faux leather material that they used for the gauntlets. And his boots, I think are pretty good at, at looking as if they, they are transitioned from the boots. Obviously the boots are a separate component, but the way that they've overlapped these little folds here, it does almost look like it's the same boot. Speaking of boots, you've got the undersole there done in black. A nice little touch is they've, they've actually put uh, the almost these little ankle heel areas there in gold. And then they've almost put like these metal caps on the front of his feet. Definitely one of my favorite things about this six scale figure release of Batman is the underbody. And I'm glad that they went the route of giving him a muscular body. Now I'm not 100% certain if this is exclusive to Batman, if this is the first time we've seen this body being used. If it is, I certainly hope that they continue the trend of releasing other superheroes like a Superman, for example, an Aquaman, even like a Flash, could all adopt this sort of muscular body type. It, the hard part, though, is when they release, not Sideshow specifically, but when any company releases a big muscular figure and then they put regular a regular outfit over top of an existing six-scale body. Proportionately, a character like Batman should be bigger, should be broader, should be more muscular, that you can't just put an outfit, as good as this outfit is, you just can't put this outfit on a regular six-scale body. So again, I don't know if this is the first time that they've used this body. They may have also used it with a previously released Superman, but if they have introduced a brand new body for this Batman, I hope this trend continues with future releases of theirs. Just before we have a look at Batman's articulation, I just want to show how, how easy it is to take the hands out. Removing the hand that I wanted to take out and replacing it with the hand that I want to put in, you can see how easy that is. All of the hands, and I know I've said this already, all the hands already having their supplied pegs makes things a whole lot easier 
than having the peg still remaining in the socket and then trying to take pliers or even like your fingers to pull the peg out. I'm glad that Sideshow continues to have all of their hands with the pegs built in because it means changing out the hands can be a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's have a look at Batman's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. It also hinges back and it hinges forward, which leads me to believe this section right here is a dumbbell ball joint. You've got a ball joint right there, and then you've got a ball joint right here. Normally, you would only be able to rotate the head this way, and of course, slightly have a hinge back and forth. But you can see how much more just the neck alone can bend back and forth. I'm glad that they did use two ball joints, does it gives you a lot more options to bending the Cape Crusader's head. Even if you want to have like a more brooding Batman, you can have his head angled down and a lot of that can be contributed to the ball joint being in the neck as well. His arms move out as well as forward and back. You can definitely feel a big difference between these arms and some of the arms of a standard six scale figure release. Now he does have a bicep swivel or at least it seems as if he's got a bicep swivel. Maybe the bicep is actually built into the the shoulder area here. He does have a single bend at the elbow. You can also rotate, and you can also rotate the hand. So rotate the arm. The arm actually rotates at the elbow. So just in case you were thinking it's just this part that I'm rotating, the elbow itself also rotates here too. And like I said, you've got the hinge back and forth. Hinges back and forth on the hand, and the hand rotates all the way around. The Cape Crusader has an ab crunch, as well as a waist swivel that will allow a good range of motion side to side of Batman's upper torso. As for his legs, his legs hinge out, forward and back. If you are also wondering, the Batman lower under ruse are a separate piece from the rest of his body suit. I don't know if I would consider taking this off, but I guess if you didn't want to have, I probably wouldn't even suggest taking it off, but at least if it being separate, you could take this off if you wanted to. I think you lose a little bit of the appeal of this by removing the underoos because this is after all classic Batman. He has a uh, thigh swivel. It actually swivels by where it connects to the lower half, the lower waist area. It swivels right there. He has a double hinge in the knee and then the feet, the, unlike the elbow, the lower leg doesn't rotate. It only rotates up here. So you've got the double hinge on the knee here, and then the rotation comes solely from the boot being able to rotate over top of the fabric. And then you've got posability in the feet. You've got the ankle rocker, you've got forward and back, and in theory, you can rotate the feet all the way around as well. Sideshow Collectibles, I think, has done a bang-up job here on this rendition of Batman. Now, this isn't the first time that Sideshow has approached the Cape Crusader, but I feel like this is the most successful. Earlier releases of Batman, at least from Sideshow, almost depicted Batman much more aged, much more grizzled and wrinkled, whereas here we have Batman in a much more youthful, in-his-prime look. This look really does work well for Batman. I like the head sculpt. I also like the alternate head sculpt that they gave him. Something that we don't often see with Batman's six scale figures is an alternate Bruce Wayne head sculpt that you can mix and match. The outfit is a nice touch and I really like that they put it on a muscular body underneath. Batman should be big and muscular. He shouldn't be a six scale figure with simply Batman clothes over top of it. So incorporating a muscular body only makes this Batman figure that much cooler. I really do like this one. He could have afforded maybe some more accessories, some bat gadgets, if you will, but at least he comes with two Batarangs, which currently I've got him here holding in final looks. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, now I can't stress this one enough, this one is very limited. It's limited to 1,000 copies worldwide. Currently, it's pre-order, it's on a pre-order, over at Sideshow Collectibles website for the price point of $220 US. I think that's a pretty good price, even though he doesn't come with a whole lot of accessories. The interchangeable head and just the way that they've done the figure on its own, I think justifies paying the $220 price point for him. Like I said, though, he is on a pre-order and uh, you can currently set up a payment plan as well. So if that price point does seem a little high, don't worry. Sideshow Collectibles allows you to pay in installment plans as well. So if you want to break that down, you can pay in smaller installments until you finally pay off the Cape Crusader and he can be shipped right to your door. I'm going to put the link down below. 
Like I said, he's currently on a pre-order with an estimated arrival date of December 2018 to February 2019. Today we were having a look at the Sideshow Collectibles. This was the Batman Sideshow Exclusive 6 scale figure. Looking really good. If Sideshow Collectible Reviews look really good for you and you want to check out some of the other ones that I've done on this channel, there's a playlist for Sideshow Collectible Reviews. So you can check out and see all the earlier videos that I've done for them. Also, if you haven't had a chance, hit that little subscribe button down below as certainly more videos will be coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.